Hi, I'm Phil Dolman, and these are four shapes that you need to know on your ukulele. What are those shapes, and why do you need to know them? I'll show them to you. They're shapes that you already know, which is a great place to start from. C7 A7 G7 and E7 probably played those chords lots of times. So why are they so important and why, other than to play the songs you've already played with them, do you need to know them? Well they are the key to playing all over the fingerboard. Not just every seventh chord, but every seventh chord in multiple places so you have a choice of where to play a chord and to modify them to make chords that aren't seventh chords, other types of chords. Let me show you how it works. Play your C7, but play it with your second finger instead of your first finger. Now we're going to move it up the neck. Slide it up one fret and put down a bar with your index finger across the first fret. You now have a C sharp 7 or a D flat 7. Move it up one more. Now I'm barring the second fret and my second finger is on the third fret. You might recognise that one, D7, and I can keep moving it up. Third fret will be D sharp or E flat 7, fourth fret E7, fifth fret F7, sixth fret F sharp 7, seventh fret G7. And I could keep going until I ran out of frets or just couldn't squeeze my fingers in. Now we're going to look at how you can memorise these later on, you can learn where they are. But it might help if you have a look at my other lesson on how to find the notes on the fingerboard. And that will start to explain some of the same patterns that we're going to find when we do this. Let's try our A7 shape. Again, I'm using my second finger so that when I move it up a fret, I can put down a bar. B flat seven, or I could call it A sharp seven. The second fret, you might be familiar with this one, I've used this one before, B7. The third fret, C7. Hang on a minute, I had a C7 here. Now I've got two. Everything after this point is going to follow the same pattern as moving up my C7. So I will get at the fourth fret, a C sharp seven, which is the same as the first fret of the first shape we had. And at the fifth fret, a D7, which is the same as that second fret one. And at the 6th fret, a D sharp or E flat 7. And at the 7th fret, an E7. Do you see how we're getting the same sequence, but they're starting at different points and they're overlapping, and that's really useful. Now, if you're not keen on bar chords, the good news is we've done the bar chords. The other two shapes don't need a bar, but they are four finger shapes. First thing to do is to play your G7 but without using your index finger. That's gonna take a moment to get those three fingers to do something that these three fingers are used to doing. You'll be fighting muscle memory. So take a little while to get used to that. Should sound like that. Now, when we move this one up, we don't have to bar. We just take our index finger and put it down on the G string, which is the only open string we have at the first fret. Now I have a G sharp seven or an A flat seven. At the second fret, it's an A seven. At the third fret, it's an A sharp or B flat seven. At the fourth fret, it's a B seven. And at the fifth fret, it's a C seven. Now that's three C sevens we've got, and I could keep counting on up the neck, but I've now got that one as a C seven. But the third fret bar of our A seven looky likey was a C seven, and we already know an open C seven. Three C7s. And I'll show you in a bit why that's incredibly useful. Finally, let's do our E7 shape. Again, don't use your index finger. Play your E7, leave that one spare. Again, that's gonna take a while to get those fingers in the right places because they're not used to it. Slide it up one fret and put your index finger down on the first fret of the only open string we have, the second string. Now, you might recognize that shape, and there's a good way of helping get your fingers to this shape, is to start thinking F, 
because that'll get those first two fingers in the right place, because that's an F shape. And you've probably played this one as an F7 before now, and that's what it is. E7 moves up one fret to F7, and I can keep moving up just like before. Second fret with my index finger, F sharp 7. Slide it up so my index finger's on the third fret. G7, oh, I've got a G7 down there with one of our other shapes. Fourth fret, G sharp or A flat. Fifth fret, A7. Now I've got an A7 there, an A7 there, and an A7 there. And I can keep counting up the neck. And that's it, that's our four shapes. With that, as you can see, not only can I play any seventh chord, but I can actually find the same seventh chord sometimes in three different places. A7, A7, A7. It's incredibly useful to be able to play the same chord in different positions because it gives us the option of thinking about what note we want to hear on the top of the chord. This one, this one, this one. And then we can play chord melody style. That's the first line of Shine on Harvest Moon and I played the melody and all of this I wasn't changing chord. It was all an A7 chord but with a different note on the top so you could hear a tune happening. This is what chord melody players are doing. Okay you might ask that's great if I've got a song that has lots of seventh chords in it but here's the real magic to this system. You can use this to work out any chord type you like providing you know how to make one of our original open chords into that type of chord. Here's one you'll probably know. Change a C7 to a plain old C. The proper name will be a C major, but we tend to drop that and just say C. It's just like a shorthand. We make C7 into a plain old C major. What do we do? Well, we take this note here on the first string and we raise it up two frets. Okay? That means every time I see something that looks like a C7, I can apply that to it and it won't be a whatever letter 7 anymore, it will be that letter major. So let's do it at the second fret. Bar the second fret, put your second finger down on the third fret. That's a D7. Take that top note and raise it up two frets, which will mean putting your little finger at the fifth fret. And now it's not a D7, it's a D major, or as we'd often call it, just D. I can do that anywhere. In fact, I don't even have to know what chord I'm playing. If I randomly put my fingers down and don't look, that's something seven, and that is now changed into a major chord. I don't have to worry about that. And that's because the shape gives us the flavor of the chord, the type of chord, major, minor, seventh, whatever. The fret we put it at gives us the letter name that goes with it. Let's do another one we know. At A7, now if you know an A chord, you can put your second finger down on the second fret of the G string, and that's not an A7 anymore, it's an A. Okay, so every time we see an A7 look a likey, so let's do it for example at the fifth fret, bar the fifth fret, put your second finger down on the sixth fret of the third string up from the floor. That looks like our A7, slid up, but because it's at the fifth fret, it's a D7. Now take your ring finger and raise up the note from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the G string. And now it's not a D7, it's a D. Okay, that's turning sevenths into plain old major chords. Let's try one where we can get a minor chord. Let's do A again. Play your A and compare it to an A minor. Oh, we took our index finger off that time. So what we had to do was we had to take our A7, make it into an A, and then take off the first finger to make it an A minor. But we don't have to go through all of that process. We can just look at that A minor, refinger it so that I'm playing it with my ring finger, lay my bar along the nut and just move the whole thing up. You might already have played a B minor. It's quite a common chord, lots of songs have one in, in uh, keys that are friendly for the ukulele. 
That's just a bar at the second fret and then something that looks like an A minor. A minor, move it up. And that means we can actually make a B7 using our original A7 lookalike. We can put our ring finger down and make it a B. And we can take our second finger off and make it a B minor. Let's go the whole hog. Take off that finger and that finger. So now it's this finger makes it a seventh. Your ring finger makes it a seventh. Your second finger makes it major or minor. Take them both off and just leave that one finger. Now you've got a B minor seven because we made a B seven and we made a B minor at the same time. And I can do that all over the neck. Whenever I see a shape that looks like an A7, I can turn it into the major chord and I can turn it into the minor chord and I can turn it into the minor seven just by modifying our original shape. Now that's a lot of chords. We've now got, if we go up to the seventh fret, let's have a count. If we go up to the seventh fret and we count the open shape originally, that's eight seventh chords there, eight major chords. If we take the C when we've converted it from seventh to major, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is just going up to the seventh fret. We've got another eight with the A7 shape. That's three eights. Another eight if we made that major, that's four eights. And another eight if we made that minor, that's five eights, that's 40. But then we have another eight if we did the minor and the seven at the same time and made the minor seven. 48 different places to play a whole load of seventh major and with one of the shapes we did minor seven as well. That's really powerful knowledge. We haven't even done the modifying of the G7 or the E7 yet. That's just two shapes. G7. Now, some of these shapes modify nicely to make some chords and not nicely to others. And what do we do with those? We throw them out. If they're not going to be useful for us because they're too difficult to play, well, we've got three other shapes we can use. We don't have to use every shape for everything. For example, trying to turn that G chord, well, it, it can be done, but it's not very nice. If you take a G rather than a G7 and move it up, but it can be done, but it's not great. The E7 one has always been a problem for ukulele players because we know full well when we play our E7 down here that there isn't really a simple E chord down there. I mean, we can just about get one if we put our little finger down on the fourth fret, but it's not a great sounding one because our two middle strings play the same note. And if you're not quite in tune, it can sound horrible. It's also not that easy to reach. So we tend to go up the neck to play an E and oh look, we're using one of our other shapes. We're using the C7 shape, modified to make it a C and moved up to the fourth. So we're using this same system already to get out of a hole where we have a shape that doesn't convert very easily. So that was not gonna make a great major chord. Who cares? Well, we've got plenty of other shapes to do that, but it will make a nice minor seventh. It'll go from a seventh to a minor seventh. We can make E7 into E minor seven just by lifting off our index finger, by lowering the note on the G string by one fret. So let's try it. We'll take our E7, play it with the wrong three fingers, move it up and put our index finger down on the second string first fret, and we'll keep going, second fret, third fret. That's a G7. Now I can make a G minor seven just by lowering the note on the G string by one fret. Now you might find you can slide it down, but it's not the best idea because it's a bit of a squeeze. Your best bet is to switch your first two fingers around. So we're gonna swap strings with them and we're going to end up with the third fret, the fifth fret, the third fret, the fifth fret. And now we have a G minor seven, but that also means we have a G minor seven, a G sharp minor seven, an A minor seven, an A sharp or B flat minor seven, etc. Just by modifying that shape. If we can see what we can do down here, we can do it anywhere we see something that uses that same shape. Okay, let's stop 
and breathe. There's an awful lot of information flying about there. It's going to take time to get this stuff into your head and into your fingers. And that's okay because there's an awful lot of stuff there. If you could do all that by tea time, you would be an astonishing player and you'd be able to play anything in any key. But we know that's not how it works. We don't learn things that quickly. How are we going to learn it? Well, I said this on my other video about learning the notes all over the fingerboard. Don't try and memorise this all. It won't work and then you'll end up feeling frustrated and disappointed. The best thing to do is to learn things like this in a musical context. So here's my advice. Find a song you already know how to play. A song that maybe has two chords. There's lots of great two chord songs. Um, so a song that maybe has C and G7. Things like Dance the Night Away by the Mavericks just goes C and G7. C, G7. That is the whole song. Things like uh, C'est La Vie, Teenage Wedding by Chuck Berry. Was a teenage wedding and the old folks wish them well. That's a C. Stays on a C. They truly love the mademoiselle. And then it's a G7. And then it's a G7 for ages. And Madame have rung the chapel bell. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks. It goes to show you never can. Back to C. So those songs with two chords are great because you've only got to find alternatives to two chords. So let's have a look and see if we can find some. We need a C and a G7. Okay. Let's start just by picking a shape and moving it up and see if we can get to a C. We need a shape that can turn from a seventh into a C. And I should mention that. Why were all of our original chords seventh chords? Why did I pick sevenths? The simple reason that those four shapes all make a nice easy seventh chord. They don't all make a nice minor chord. They don't all make a nice major chord or whatever, but they do make a nice seventh chord. So that's a good place to start and then we can modify. So we want a C chord. So what we need to do is somehow find a C7 that we know we can modify to a C. Well, we know we can modify our C7 open chord shape into a major by doing that, but that's no good because that's the one we're already playing. So we can throw that shape out. We know that E7 doesn't make a nice major chord. We've learnt that the hard way when we've been playing songs and there's an E chord in it and we don't like it. What about the A shape? Yes, we can make an A7 into an A nicely just by raising up the note on the G string by two frets. So let's start with an A7, second finger, move it up, A sharp or B flat, B, ah, third fret, C7. We don't want a C7, we want a C. So we're going to put our ring finger down on the fifth fret of the G string to modify it, and now it's a C. So instead of this C, we have this C. Now we need a G7 to go with it. We can't use that shape, we're already using that for our open G7, we need a different one. Well this one doesn't need to be modified, it's a seventh. We could do it with any of our other three shapes. Let's try the E7 shape. Start with your E7. Slide it up one fret and put your index finger down on the first fret of the second string. F7. One more. F sharp 7. One more. G7. Bingo. Now we can play those same songs here. Which is the same song as this. They sound different because the notes are arranged differently, but they are the same chords. If there are two of you, you've got some ukulele playing friends, get one person to play these two shapes, C and G7, and someone else to play this shape and this shape. Not only will it prove to you that they're the same chords, but it will sound great because you're not both playing exactly the same thing. So that's the way to do it. Start off by finding simple songs and find new ways to play those same chords elsewhere on the neck. If you struggle, just find one chord in the song that you can play somewhere else. Eventually, you'll start to spot ones that maybe you already knew. So you might already know that D7 there. That's great, then you don't have to learn it. You've learnt it already. 
once you start to play a few songs that have got a G7 in, you'll start to get that E7 shape one there at the third fret and that'll start to stick. And then when you're playing songs, whenever you see a G7, try heading for that one instead of that one and your muscle memory will build up. And the beauty of this is once your muscle memory is built up for the G7, it's the same muscle memory for all of the others because they're the same shape at a different fret. Once you're comfortable with that G7 there, you can count up from G, G, G sharp, A, and at the fifth fret, it's an A7. And you can start replacing that A7 with this A7. Do them one at a time in little bits and they'll start to stick. And the ones that'll stick first are the ones that are in the nice easy keys that you're already used to playing in. So you'll be able to use them. If you just learn one, I had a student once who spent a long time learning how to play C sharp seven at the first fret. And that's great. He did a great job of it. He found something he wanted to learn and he learned it. But then a couple of weeks later, he came back and said, that chord is useless. I'd never ever get to play it. And that's because that chord just didn't crop up in the keys of any of the songs he was playing at his ukulele club. And he was gonna to have to learn to play some other chords to go with that one to even use it in his playing at home. But if you learn how to play common chords that are already in your songbook in different places, you'll use them and you can throw them in every time you jam. And I guarantee this, if it gets to a G7 and you're playing here or even here, and the person next to you hears or sees you, they'll be going, what are you, what are you doing up there? Show me that, that sounds great. That's different to what I'm doing. Before you know it, it will spread out through your group. And you'll start being able to arrange songs for your group where not everybody's playing the same thing. The people who've just started, by all means, they're just getting used to playing, they can play these simple chords. The people that have been there a while, who are maybe getting a little bit fed up with playing those and want to do something different, but you don't want to put a really complicated song in because then the beginners can't join in. Well, give them these chords. They'll have a bit more of a challenge and everybody will sound better because you're mixing up the different inversions. The people that have been playing these shapes for a while, well, give them different shapes, even further up the neck. Before you know it, you're gonna have three different groups of people all playing the same chords, but in three different positions. If you've ever watched the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain perform, you'll see this is a key part of their arrangement. You'll see some hands down here, some hands here, some hands here. They're spreading out those chords and making them sound so much better. There's a lot to learn. You can download all of the diagrams for this from my website, phildolman.co.uk. Have a look on the free stuff page and you'll find uh, download sheets with all of these chord diagrams that you can help yourselves to. I hope you've enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel for loads more lessons and tips, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.